first of all, uh, welcome to Iceland. Uh, as you might see here, out of my window, there is actually no ice here in Iceland. Uh, that's actually because we are we are now probably living uh, the, the warmest winter here ever. It's been a remarkable winter here, hardly any snow. So I guess we have to have to change the name of the, the country soon. But what I'm going to talk about is uh, the fisheries. And uh, my speciality is the fisheries. That's what I'm teaching here at, at, the, at the university in, in Akureyri. And Akureyri, my town, is, is uh, based in northern Iceland. Now, what's happening here actually is that... Uh, uh, Okay, I get this. In. I have to share a, a different screen, obviously. Okay, there we have it. <clears throat> now, I will in this semester uh, try to explain to you uh, why are all the big fisheries in the north in these cold waters? They are not in the in the in, in the warmer waters, but in the cold waters. Now, first to put it into perspective, uh, my country, Iceland, is quite small. This is a population by country. China is the most populous country in the world, and this is sort of according to number of people. Uh, we are uh, close to the Maltese in, 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 in population numbers. Very small, very few people living here. But we have a fairly high, high, high gross domestic productions, which basically mean we are, are fairly well off here in Iceland. And we have quite big fisheries. So compared to how few we are, our fisheries are among the largest in the world. And we are catching of one to two million tons of, of, of fish every year. Which is one to two percent of the global cats. And uh, uh, if you compare it to the European Union, of which many of you are, you are part of, uh, if we would join the European Union, we would become the biggest fishing country there. Uh, there would be no country in the EU catching more than we do. There are two European countries catching more than we do, and these are Norway and Russia, but they are not part of the EU. And if you convert this into cats per number of people, uh, you can see uh, this down there, that uh, the biggest fishing countries in the world are these small northern countries living close to the Arctic. Uh, actually, there is another country on the other side of the world called, called Fastland Islands, which are, are very, very few people living there. They are kind of a similar as we on the other side, but we have Faroe Islands, Greenland, and Iceland as, as, as uh, the biggest fishers in the world. Uh, these are all small sub-Arctic islands. Uh, uh, living mostly on fisheries. And these are cold countries, uh, few people living there, but very, very big fisheries. The economy depends heavily on fisheries. Why is that? Now, let's see the world. This is uh, the world, and what you see on this map is the temperature. Uh, so you have the, 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 the orange and, and the yellow as the warmest ocean temperature, but then they gradually get cooler as you go, go north and, and south from Ecuador. So uh, this is Iceland here. This is the Arctic Circle. We are just hanging just below it. And uh, we are living here at, a, at, a, at a, where the ocean temperatures are fairly cold. Now, this is where the people live. And as you can see, the population densities are in the, you could call it the, the temperate zones warm uh, and cold temperate zones. So this is where most of the people live, here in, in, in Asia as well, and in, in Europe, the Middle East, the, the highest number of people. These people need food. There's a lot of people there, and they get it through agriculture and fisheries. And what you can see here are the biggest fishing grounds in the world. So this is where we have the, 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 the major fisheries. Uh, they are not here in, in these warmer waters, they are in the, in the colder. Uh, 
close by this yellow area. Uh, we also have some areas which are called upwelling areas, which are uh, a little bit different phenomena going on. Of Peru, for example, is on the warm waters, but besides these, it is uh, the boundaries of the Arctic and the sub-Arctic world where the, the, the major fisheries are. And you can see here these countries who are so big in fisheries. Uh, we here in the North Atlantic, we share in many ways similar cultures as in North and Norway, Faroe Islands, Newfoundland, Greenland also doing a lot of fisheries. And when you come here over to the Pacific, the biggest fisheries there are in where? Alaska, in the, in, in the colder parts. So the fish is there. And if you go through history, uh, these fisheries, they uh, do heavily uh, uh, influence the, the, the history of all these nations that are living there. And if it takes just these Arctic people, the people living in the north, uh, we have the Inuits in, in Greenland and northern Canada and Alaska, some in Russia as well. Uh, their culture is heavily ocean based. Uh, actually, uh, hunt, more hunting uh, seals and whales than, than fishing, except nowadays. In North and Norway, we have actually have the Sami people, which are, you know, we usually associate the Sami with the reindeer, inland reindeer. But they actually have a very strong uh, fishing link. They did a lot of fishing in North and Norway. And there was a subgroup of the Sami called the Sea Sami, who were actually the, 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 the best fishermen of the, of the north. Then you have the Nordics themselves. The Nordics are the Icelanders, the, the Faroese, the, the, the Norwegians, Swedes, and Danes. And, uh, and uh, these all share a, a, a similar historical background. And their culture, my culture, uh, is heavily fisheries based. Uh, and I'm talking of through the centuries. And you go to the Pacific, we have the, the, the native Indians there, uh, and many of them, the, the, the culture living on the northern uh, Pacific coast, they have a very strong link with fisheries as well. So in all these northern and cold areas, the, the, the fisheries have, have been of major influence. Now, uh, The, later on, uh, other players came into these northern areas to fish because they would gradually notice that these great fishing and hunting grounds were, uh, gave a bounty, they gave uh, value, they gave protein for the people of the, their countries. Um, not only the fish, but also the whales and the seals. The first to expand from their areas to the, the, the northern areas to to hunt and fish where they were the, probably the Iberians, the, 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 the Spanish and the Portuguese. And actually the, the, the most successful fishers or actually whalers originally were the Basques in, in, in northern Spain and, and, and France. So they would start quite early to, to explore the northern waters to, to, to seek whales. Then other fleets from other countries began to expand uh, the Dutch, the British, and the French began to send not only fleets to, to, to explore the, 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 the world, but to fish in these northern waters. They would send big fleets to, to Iceland, they would send them to Newfoundland, and later to northern Norway to, to, to fish and, and, and get protein and to the, for, the, for the people of their countries. And these fleets, they would, they would influence, for example, our history. We had uh, we had a period in Icelandic history which you call the English century. We were not under England, but there was a big English fleet here, and they would influence the politics in Iceland. Later, there would be a French period, and then a Dutch period where the big fleets were made from these countries. Now, uh, then later on, I mean, these were the big countries in Europe, the, the superpowers at that time. Uh, and these superpowers were based on, on, on fleets and, and, and seamen, which were, which were they, they got recruited from the fishermen. Later, others would join in, start to spread their fisheries. The Norwegians started in the middle of the, of the, of the, of the 19th century to, to spread out both to fish, herring, cod, and, and, and to whaling. 
the Swedes have a history of, of offshore fisheries where, where, where a Swedish fleet uh, went fishing uh, far out at, at sea. Belgians started to, to fish in, in these waters and the Americans as well. They would, uh, they would come American boats to, for example, Iceland to, to fish halibut. So these, these big industrialized countries would send the fleets to, 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 to fish in these waters. Then uh, we progress in time. Uh, in the late 19th or early 20th century, um, fleets from, uh, from, from Germany, Germans began to send boats. Uh, the Danes began to send boats, for example, to Iceland to fish. Uh, and then the locals, the Faroe East, for example, and the Icelanders also start to kind of spread out. Of course, they were fishing a lot in their waters. This period where they began to fish in other waters as well. The Faroe East actually came here to Iceland in the, the end of the 19th century to do fishing and have basically been fishing here as well as in the Faroes for, for since that time. Icelanders began to send the boats as well all over the north to, to fish. So these fleets were, were, were spreading. And then we are in the 20th century now. Others began to, to, to send boats to these waters to, to fish the Finns, Finnish fishermen here in Iceland to catch herring. The Russians big, built a big fleet. Uh, the Polish had a big fleet of, 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 of big boats fishing all over the world. And, uh, and the Japanese had, were sending boats. I did notice that some of the, the, the students uh, following here were from Romania, and I, I think I, I found out that the, there was a, actually a Romanian fleet also fishing all over the world. Not a big one, but, but there was. So these fleets would spread all over the world to, 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 and, and, and focus on these cold waters, to, to fish these cold water species. Uh, but what has happened since that is, since that time, is that uh, uh, the, 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 the economic exclusive zones have been uh, uh, growing. So basically, the sea is not free anymore. You cannot send a boat to fish here in Icelandic waters anymore, because uh, we and other countries gradually expanded the economic exclusive zones, which meant that we are now controlling our waters uh, ourselves. So. So these uh, big fleets from Germany and, and England and these they are not no more fishing in these waters because they cannot the, the sea is not open anymore. So what you have now in the these northern cold waters is that you have the locals taking over. So for example, what you have here on this uh, graph are, are 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 four very modern trawlers who are supplying these waters, fishing fish fueling the economies and then selling the majority, 95% of the cats is sold to other countries, to, to Europe or America or, or Asia. And these four trawlers are, are, one is from Iceland, one is from Faroe Islands, one is from Greenland and one is from Northern Norway. And, and there is no difference. We, we, are, we, are, we, are, we are now using similar equipment, highly modern equipment to, to, to gain our wealth. This is our resource. Now, I was going to show you a few videos while we are at it, but I will actually, well, I might see you, I might show you one, but uh, the later videos, I will, I will, I will uh, show you to you later on. Let's suppose that you're writing a really important email to a colleague. Okay. Skip that. Uh, I don't know if you hear the, the yeah, sound of the video. The fjord at the northeastern tip of ice. I think I'll just mute it. Uh, this is caught. And uh, of all these fishes that are being harvested in the north, the cod is the best known. It is the, the main reason that these fleets uh, went to this distant water to, to, to get food, protein for the, for the, for the people. And uh, Usually it was the cod that was the main cut because that's the kind of a very typical fish of, of, of these waters. Uh, now these cods, these are here in northern Iceland and uh, they are, 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 what's happening there is that they are spawning. So every year 
uh, usually in, in an early spring, uh, the cod migrate from deeper water to shallower water to spawn. And this is where our biggest fisheries were actually happening in early spring when the cod was in shallower water, easy to catch it, and uh, it gave the biggest fisheries. The cod can be more than uh, this is a quite big, probably a big female. You can see it's very, very fat. It's, it is probably full of roe or, or fish eggs. And they can be quite big. They can be more than one meter long. These, these cods, uh, I think the record is up to one, 1 1.4 meters, uh, but usually 70, 80 centimeters long. Quite, quite a big fish. Now these are the juveniles. Uh, the eggs are tiny, tiny, and when they hatch, they hatch into juvenile fry. They spend the summer in the plankton, in the, in the, in the, in the water column. And then in the autumn, they look like that, and they start to go down to the bottom. So there you have a lot of, of, of small cod. Uh, the cod is cannibalistic, which means that they are trying to eat each other. So you had a bigger cod there trying to eat a small one. Luckily, the small one escaped. But you see, see of, of, of cod of many, many different sizes trying to eat each other. But then they grow up. Uh, these guys before, the small ones might be one or two year old, but uh, when they are six or seven, they, they become they become uh, catchable, so we can, we can we can catch them and, and eat them. A uh, school of, of of small cod. Hmm. Okay. Now, uh, mm -mm, back to the presentation. Now, now, what are these fishes? Uh, the cod is the major one. That's a big one, the cod. But there are many others. And uh, most of the fishes that uh, are, are well known in the world, herring, halibut, Salmon, pollock, uh, redfish, king crab, that's the species they are catching in the, in the episode Deadly at Cats. These are cold water species. They are, are in the subarctic or the Arctic. Now, this, is a, a, this shows you up, uh, approximately the difference between the, 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 the Arctic and the subarctic. Uh, the subarctic is the border between the temperate zone and the, and the Arctic zone. And uh, as you can see, for example, here in Iceland, uh, we are part of Iceland is in the Arctic, but most of the, the, the zone is actually in the sub-Arctic zone. But this exactly at this area, this borderline area where the greatest fisheries are. And we are catching these, uh, these species. And there are only a few species well known, for example, tunas and mackerel, who are not in this area, but rather in, in, in warmer places. So the, the well-known species, uh, the big ones, uh, they, they are from this area. Uh, why are they there? Now, we're getting to do complicated things. Now, uh, for the fish to be so abundant there, there of course has to be a lot of food there. And the reason they are abundant there is because there is a lot of food available in these areas. Uh, the food chain starts with the plankton. On land, it's, it's the plants who are the, are, the, are, the, are the base of the food chain, but in the ocean, they have very few normal plants, but they have uh, uh, algae, uh, phytoplankton, actually. Uh, phytoplankton, uh, also benthic algae or kelp, they uh, photosynthesize, that is, they produce organic material, which animals cannot do. Uh, so there is something in the system in the northern cold water system that uh, encourages that, that uh, makes photosynthesis uh, unusually high in these areas. Now let's look at what the plants need. They need sunlight. Ah, there's maybe not very much sunlight in these northern areas. 
what's the reason in the spring because there's you know enough sunlight but uh, in the winter it's it's very limiting uh h2o is water i mean that's everywhere in the sea carbon dioxide we need carbon dioxide that's also everywhere basically but they need nutrients which are basically the same as fertilizers that the farmer is spreading fertilizer on the land to get the grass and the, the crop to grow and these are these are nutrients and uh, there's a lot of chemistry there uh, i'm not going to go into this i told you about this before uh, the phytoplankton are the most uh, most uh, important ones but the problem is is the nutrients now if you are a phytoplankton algae in the deep waters there might be you know more than 1000 meters down to the bottom uh, of course you have to be close to the surface to photosynthesize you need light there is only light at the surface it gets dark down there so you you cannot really get any any, any sunlight there but you also need nutrients and that's a problem the nutrients uh, they are usually in the deeper waters they are not at the surface they are in the deeper waters so you have either but not both and you need both basically so what is needed is some kind of a mixing mechanism something to kind of a stir up the ocean so the nutrients in the deeper waters can be brought up to the surface if that doesn't happen the 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 plankton the, the phytoplankton doesn't have everything that it needs it, it cannot multiply now in arctic and subarctic waters there are several factors actually that are influencing this we have large continental shelves continental shelves are the shallow part of the ocean they are actually kind of on a continuous from the land there's a difference between the continental plates and the deep, very deep waters. Uh, so we have big continental plates, but so are there other also in other places, but yeah, that's good. Uh, collision of currents. For example, here in Iceland, we are at the boundary of the cold currents coming from the north and the warm from the south. And when these currents collide, they create mixing. So they, they, they hit each other and they, they, they fight over dominance, but this creates a mixing of the sea and the nutrients as they are in the deep water, they are brought up to the surface. So these areas where the cold and the warm are meeting are very, very protective. And the third factor, which is probably the most important factor of the, of the, of the, of, 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 of uh, the productivity of the north is an annual cycle of, uh, of, 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 of winter, spring, summer, and autumn. That's the next slide, but just going to show you this, uh, this picture here. It shows the productivity of the ocean. And uh, the, 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 this color here, this is basically the desert of the ocean. Very little happening here, very little production. There is hardly any mixing there. So the oceans here are clear, you can see you know far away in the ocean but that just means there's very little productivity here you have a lot of productivity in these colder waters now uh, so basically it's good uh, for productivity where cold meets warm it's not good if it's only warm if it's only cold it's actually not good anymore and uh, good uh, it's not good uh, there, but uh, where it, it's beating, that's good. Now, if you think about the season, the season is actually also where the cold is meeting the, the warm. And uh, this complicated graph here shows that in the northern winters here in Iceland, it's cold. It's rather dark, it's getting brighter now, there's a little bit fog outside now, but uh, now it's getting close to spring. But for example, December here can be pretty dark, and it is in fact too dark for the plankton to get enough sunlight. They cannot grow because they don't get enough sunlight. So, so this yellow here is the sunlight, and in the winter there is not enough sunlight. However, it's cold. The air is cold. It can be quite freezing here, and uh, this cools down the, the surface layers of water. So the air is cooling down the sea. Uh, what happens? Now we are into physics. 
uh, the surface waters, which are very saline, there's a lot of salt in them, they become cooler and they actually get heavier. They get more dense than the waters below. So they sink. Cool down and they sink. Uh, and up comes new water, which was warmer, and that's cooled down as well by the cold air, and it sinks. So you have this constant mixing going on in the winter. Cooling down at the surface, it sinks, new up, cools down, sinks, mixing. And what's happening? Uh, it's actually all the nutrients who are in the deeper waters, they are brought up. Uh, the plankton, the phytoplankton doesn't grow, there is not enough sunlight. But in the spring, when the when the sun starts to, 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 to rise again, it becomes a point where there's enough sunlight and there is a lot of nutrients and everything basically goes haywire, goes mad. The production, uh, this is a phytoplankton production, no in the winter, then in the spring, it, it gives a very, very sharp peak and there's a lot of production. The turn can the, the sea can turn almost green with with with, with phytoplankton, and uh, this is the reason for the for the high productivity in these waters. There is a period there where there is plenty full of everything. There is enough nutrients. There is enough sunlight, and this gives plenty of phytoplankton, which creates uh, plenty of food for the small crustaceans there, which are then in turn eaten by the fishes. Uh, then comes summer, and what happens then? It got warmer. Uh, the air is warmer than the ocean now, so it actually warms up the, the surface layers of water. They become warmer, and they become less dense. They become lighter, and they don't want to mix anymore. They want to stay at the surface. So this mixing stops during the summer. First at the, at the surface and gradually get deeper and deeper that this mixing doesn't happen anymore. And uh, the phytoplankton, they, the algae, they finish up the nutrients. They just eat them all and this production stops. There's plenty of sunlight, uh, the ocean is warm, but there, there, is a, there is a very severe lack of nutrients. So the, the phytoplankton stops growing. And if you think about it, this is actually the situation in the, in the tropical waters, where the ocean is warm, the air is always warm. This is always the case. There is always summer in the, in, the, in the warmer countries. And therefore, there is always this lack of nutrients in, 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 in warm oceans. And consequently, lack of fish. Oh, okay, there are fish there, but not as abundant as in the colder waters. Uh, then we have the autumn. Uh, this begins to this cycle begins to to start again. Now, so there is no primary production in the winter. Uh, it's very high in the in the, in the spring. It's very low in the summer, but start to go high again in the, in the, in the autumn until winter comes actually with lack of sunlight. So it is spring production. Now, uh, I have a video with plankton. Now, uh, I think I will actually uh, show it to you at the end if there is time. So we'll keep these videos. Now, so this food chain, which is uh, dominated by the phytoplankton, this is the sun here. The sun is the source of the energy which the plants are only able to use. There are benthic algae as well, but they are actually a small group in the ocean compared to the phytoplankton. And this energy they get from the, the sun, they use to create biomass uh, material, organic material, which is then the source of, of food for the entire food chain. So we have next in the, in the food chain, uh, we have the zooplankton, which is small, tiny, uh, for example, crustaceans, which are crabs, and, and many other species. We have small animals uh, on the bottom. They are eating this, they are eating the algae. Then, uh, usually, we have the, the smaller fish eating the, the, the small uh, uh, zooplankton. Note that the fish, they are too big to eat the phytoplankton. It's so tiny, so they need a link with the zooplankton. 
And so it goes up the, the, the food chains to the, the top predators, the seals and the whales and the birds, etc. And these species here are, are kind of a classical northern species. Uh, the killer whale can be found wherever in the world, actually, but it's by far the most uh, common in the, in the colder waters of the, of the Arctic and the, and the after Antarctic. Seals are almost only found in the, in the, in the, in the colder waters. Uh, a few species of monk seals in the tropics, but they are very, very rare. So you get all this production uh, going on in these Arctic waters, creating all this phytoplankton, which then through the food chains creates all the fish, which all these fleets are helping fishing and uh, now are fished by the, by the locals. Now, what's happening now is, as I showed you out of my window, is that uh, it's not very good weather now, it, it's, it's fog outside now, but there's hardly any snow now here in Iceland. Uh, normally, this should be uh, two meters of snow there outside, but it's not going on. We are experiencing the warmest winter on records, actually. Uh, probably because uh, the, the temperature is actually going up. The earth is getting warmer. Uh, you can see it here uh, that this is the, 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 the global surface temperatures and they're going up. That's the main thing happening. This is Icelandic waters. Uh, it's going up as well. Actually, there used to be a warm period here, down again, but now it's going up again quite, quite clearly, the, the oceanic temperatures. Uh, so what's happening, actually, is that uh, the species are moving. So uh, the species, we are getting species here that uh, were not here before, because they are adapted to warmer waters. Uh, and now we are seeing them, them come here again. Uh, this is uh, one of my ex-students. He finished a few years ago. He, he, he's a fisherman on a, on a pelagic boat. And what you can see here in the background is a big bluefin tuna, which is a red, needs relatively warm waters, and, and mackerel, which is also new here. Uh, they are clearly coming here, spreading up north because of the warming climate. And this is another graph from, from, from our research on, on, on the distribution of pelagic species. Pelagic species, uh, fishes are fishes who are not linked to the bottom. They are uh, close to the water surface. They don't care where the bottom is. And they are, they are spreading quite clearly from, uh, from the south to the north. So the northern species are going further north. It's getting too warm for them, basically. And, uh, but the area is being opened up for, opened up for, for, for more southern species going there. So this is happening in, 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 in many of the northern areas. It's, they're getting new species. Now, uh, another thing happening is that the Arctic is opening up. So the Arctic, which is, uh, uh, had uh, the, the Arctic was too cold, there was too much ice there for many species to be able to, to traverse over from the Pacific to the Atlantic. Now, because it's getting warmer, the ice is getting, there's getting less ice. The species are actually uh, now, some of them able to, to, to go over the Arctic. So we have here in the Pacific, many species living, we have often actually closely related species here in the North Atlantic. They are not the same species, but closely related. There is, for example, a Pacific cod, there is an Atlantic cod, there are Pacific salmon species, there is an Atlantic, Atlantic salmon, Pacific halibut, Atlantic halibut. But now, actually, they are getting able to kind of meet again, because the, the, the climate is getting warmer, and these areas are opening up. Uh, now, what's going to happen, for example, to the economies of, of these countries who are living in the north? Now, there's a lot of uncertainty, but in general, it is predicted that they will, uh, it will be positive for them. So, they will gain more than they will lose. <clears throat> they will gain new species 
but the, the, the colder water species will uh, not lose so much. There's a net plus in this direction. And this is, for example, from, from, from two studies on that showing what's happening when it's getting warmer to the, 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 the fishing countries of the world. In general, this is a plus here, this is good, this is bad. So the ones who are, who are benefiting from the warming are Norway, Greenland, Alaska, Russia, it's Northern Russia, Iceland, Canada. These are cold countries. Now, who's going to lose? Indonesia, Brazil, uh, China. These are warm countries. So, so, so it might get too warm for for, for many species there. And another uh, picture showing uh, similar studies: uh, the the positive impact Iceland, Greenland, cold. Negative here. These are actually tropical islands in the Pacific. They will lose fish. So it's uh, the changes are 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 mean. Some will lose and some will or might gain. These are only predictions, this is not the truth. Now, uh, I've actually finished my, my, my talk and I, I hope I, 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 you realize now that uh, the fisheries of the north are very important for the local countries. They were actually very important for many other countries, uh, superpowers at that time, like, like the Netherlands and, uh, and, and, and England, uh, they actually Part of the rise, rise to fame was because of, of, of big fisheries. Uh, but nowadays, the locals are controlling these fisheries. Uh, most counties have a 200 mile economic exclusive zone, so they can uh, basically choose who's going who's gonna to be able to fish there. Uh, and the reason actually for this, why, why is all the fish there? Because there's so much phytoplankton production created by a mixture of chemistry and physics that that's, that's uh, creating a lot of food there. So, uh, cold, in a way, is very important for, for fish. Now, uh, just going to show you a, a, a few videos. Fish tending. This is my friend Ellie. He's a diver here in, 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 in Eyjafjörður, in Northern Iceland, where we live. And uh, he very often goes down diving uh, to, to see his friends. He has become a friend of some of the fishes. And I'm going to show you here a few of them here. So these particular fishes he doesn't eat. There are actually two major species. These shell shares, these are called ocean quahogs. Uh, if you Google them, this is the longest living animal in the world. They just figured out that these shells can be more than 500 years old. But then you have two fishes there. This is a wolf fish in a hole. And this is a sculpin, big sculpin. And, uh, and uh, Ellie here, he is trying to, to make the fishes his friend. Actually, he was trying for the wolf fish, but the, 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 the sculpin is, 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 is root. And he grabbed the food. So uh, the wolf is actually kind of makes a nest there. So this is his home. He likes to be there. And he, oh, well, that's a cod there. So the cod also likes to, to, to get some food. Now this is a wolfish again. The wolfish have very sharp teeth. They are actually adapted to crushing uh, shells. So a wolfish can very seriously hurt you if he bites your finger. So Ellie is taking a bit of a chance here with this particular wolfish, which he actually calls Stephanie. Uh, it is kind of a kind of a. He actually later figured out that yeah, this is actually a male. So, but he is still called Stephanie for some reason. So he found out when it's actually, uh, 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 they now have an X. There's a couple of wall pieces that have eggs in the hole there. Now there you can see uh, cots, plenty of cod there trying to, 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 to get some food. And, and this is the majority, this is the most important cats in Iceland and the, the Faroe Islands, Northern Norway, Greenland, Newfoundland, for example. <gasps> So the wolf is again. He's a little bit afraid of him. He doesn't want him to, to, to kiss him. Okay, there's a friend of his coming. Oop. 
Og Big Wolf is kan kan uh, kan actually break a small finger if it bites strong enough. So, this is where it got hurt actually because the the cord has very small, very sharp teeth and uh, and uh, he managed to bleed himself a little bit there. So it was not the, the wolfish with the big teeth and strong jaw that did hurt him, but uh, but uh, normal cod. So what he is actually doing is that he is taking tourists down there, down to the ocean, and he has basically trained the fishes, and he claims that they know him personally. When he brings other divers, uh, they always go to him, not the others, because... So uh, apparently the fishes are, are, are smarter, smarter than, than, uh, than uh, we thought. So what you can see there in the ocean that it's kind of a greenish, it's not transparent. You can you cannot see far away in this ocean. And this is because of the phytoplankton growth. It's a huge growth of this is actually the bottom algae here. There's a huge growth of plankton in this time of the year and uh, and, and that's been eaten in fact by animals and what you can see there are barnacles barnacles uh, are actually small crabs who live in the ocean and what they are doing they'll scroll back a little bit is that they are filtering they're filtering out small phytoplankton feeding on it there's a lot of small animals in the ocean filtering the sea that's a that's a jellyfish they are actually a plankton as well uh, small crab, small, these are called, called arrow worms, uh, and they're actually tiny. And there's a lot of tiny dots there, and these dots are, are, are small crustaceans. So the arrow worms are actually eating these, and then we have bigger fishes eating the, 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 these animals. Everything you see here, I'm not talking about the bottom, what's about the bottom, small dots moving around, these are, 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 are krill. Uh, also small uh, shrimp-like crustaceans who are part of the plankton and many fishes and whales are actually have a mechanism to filter these out of the ocean. This is the main food of whales, of the baleen whales, like the blue whales. And they, they, they basically scoop this up and filter them from the sea. So you can see all these small animals swirling swirling around. Uh, Bottom, the bottom you can see a lot of these are actually uh, related to starfishes, and they are having this filtering mechanism to get all this small food. Now there you can see also, uh, this is kelp, benthic algae, but you can see small jellyfish, there's a very strong current there obviously, and a lot of life, small dots all around, this is life. These are small animals swirling around, uh, the ocean is... is, is probably in spring when there's a plenty of food and the ocean is full of it. So this feeds up the food chain to fishes. Hmm. Okay. So jellyfish, they, these small jellyfish, they, they feed on these small dots you see all around, which are small, uh, mostly what they call uh, copepods, which are very small crabs. It's a comp jelly called. Uh, they are also eating these small things around them. Very, very special animals, actually. So these are all animals. Still more comp jellies. Floating around. Okay. Now, uh, I think I've actually uh, finished my talk, and I, I hope you 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 know understand a little bit better uh, what's uh, happening here in the north and why the ocean is so important for the Arctic and the people living close to the Arctic. Uh, I will now stop sharing the screen, but uh, if there are any questions, then 
feel free to 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 send them on the on the on the chat or